Hello there fellow cake friends and welcome to this week's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to pipe this cute and cozy knitted cake with buttercream. We'll top it with a simple arrangement of sugared rosemary and candied cranberries. An easy and festive way to add color to your holiday cakes. No need for molds or anything fancy. Just grab your piping bag and three tips and we can get started. I'll put all of the ingredients and tools that I'm using in the description box below as per usual. I'll also link to my piping basics video which should help you if you need a little bit of extra guidance or if piping totally intimidates you. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it helps me make more cake videos like this one just for you. And give me a thumbs up too and let's get to the tutorial. First we'll assemble our cake. I have two layers of red velvet and two layers of matcha cake. I also have a small batch of cream cheese buttercream. You can use whichever one you'd like. And then I have a batch of my Italian meringue buttercream, which I'm going to link to in the description box below. And I've also put some into this piping bag so I can make a dam for the cream cheese. So I'll just start by putting a few dabs on my eight inch cake board. And then I will put one layer of the matcha cake down. And this is five inch cakes that are one inch tall. And give that a good press, making sure it's centered. Grab your piping bag with a round tip and make a dam for your cream cheese filling to go into. This step is just to ensure that the cream cheese buttercream doesn't start to slip out as you start assembling your cake because it can be a little bit soft. So I put a nice big dab in the middle. Then using my offset spatula, I'll slowly press it outwards so that it fills that gap uh, between the cream cheese and the Italian meringue buttercream. And then I'm just gonna smooth out the top. And then we're gonna be alternating both the matcha and the red velvet cake so that we have a really cute red and green cake inside when you cut into it. So next, grab your red velvet cake and press that on, making sure it is centered. And then continue the exact same method. We'll create the dam and then fill it with the cream cheese buttercream. Spread that out again using your offset spatula, making sure you don't leave any air bubbles in there. And then flatten the top so that we can put our next layer of matcha on. And then repeat again, last time, and then we're gonna top that with the last layer of red velvet cake. Next, I'm doing a quick crumb coat. So I just have some buttercream in a small container on the side so that my big batch of buttercream doesn't get colored with all these crumbs. And doing a simple crumb coat, you can find all the instructions for how I mask cakes and crumb coat them, etc. in my buttercream class called Creative Buttercream Cakes. I will link to that in the description box below so you guys can check it out. So I chilled my crumb coated cake for maybe 15 minutes in the freezer and now I'm just masking it quickly. This part is also covered in my Creative Buttercream Cakes course, so I won't go over all the details here, but you get the idea. You're gonna mask it with sharp edges and then we are gonna be ready to pipe. I'm just perfecting my edges here and then I will clean up the base and chill it and we're ready to pipe. I'm gonna start using my bench scraper, just creating a really nice vertical straight line all the way up and down your cake, which is going to be a baseline for how we're going to be piping all the way around. And the first one I'm using is a number five piping tip, which is a star tip from PME. And my bag is filled with the same Italian meringue buttercream that we use to mask the cake. We're going to start with a shell shape. So it's a very basic shape and I do have instructions on how to do this properly in my piping basics video, which I will link to in the description box below. So it's basically adding pressure and then slowly lifting off as you come down the cake. So I start by making my way all the way down that nice straight line that we began with. Here we'll be using the 8C tip, which is the largest tip. The next technique we'll use is a braid technique. So I start basically the same as the shell technique, except this one will be going diagonally downwards. So all you do is alternate sides and do that exact same shell technique, covering the tail of the previous line with your next line. And when you get to the base, just add one shell horizontally. The next technique is the same shell technique that we started with. And if you ever feel like you need an extra guide uh, just to make sure that your lines are going straight up and down, feel free to do that with the bench scraper again. 
And sorry, we're jumping around here a bit on the cake because I hated the braid that you can see right in the middle there. So I showed you the one that I actually like because I got rid of this one afterwards. So we're using the number 44 tip here to make the exact same braiding technique as we did before. So it's just a little bit smaller, so your shells will be tinier and there will be more of them versus the big 8C tip. And I actually have some close-ups of how to pipe this braid I'm going to link to. It's a super old video, but I think it will be helpful if you can't quite see the mechanics of it here. We are back with the 8C tip and now we are going to be doing a C shape. And this is kind of like the rope that we did in the piping basics video. So more pressure on the left side and then come around in a C or a comma shape and release the pressure on the right side. And then we cover up that tail of the previous C every time we make a new one. And again, I end that with a horizontal shell. Back to the number 44 tip, I am repeating the braid pattern that we have on the other side of the rope. So just take your time here, no need to rush. And if you do ever have any mistakes, you can just remove the entire line using your bench scraper to scrape it all off and just redo it. And we are back to the shell shape with the number five tip, which is the small. And you can totally use any tips that you want here. You don't have to use PME, just have one small, one medium, and one large tip that are all star shaped. So now we are back to doing the C shapes and I'm still using the number five tip that I just used for the star. So just make your way all the way down. And you can see we're just repeating patterns here. There's nothing fancy, no real <laughs> extra techniques that you need to learn besides the braid, the shell, and the C shape or rope shape. And again, I did a line of shells and then back to the beginning. So I am back to the 8C large tip and I am doing that braid pattern once more. And all I'm doing for the rest of this cake is repeating the exact same pattern over and over again until I get to the other side. I've almost made it all the way around. I'm using my number 44 tip for a braid. And you can kind of see on the other side where I removed that last uh, braid shape that I really hated. Um, so it's super easy to remove anything if you need to. Just make sure your cake is really firmly chilled and then you can scrape it off just like you would be scraping your cake when you're masking it. And I decided to go with the rope shape here because I thought it would be the best fit uh, for this gap that I have left. So, I mean, you don't have to be perfect with this pattern. It's just freehand, mix and match the shapes as you'd like. And just have fun with it. This is just like piping practice. I'm just cleaning up the cake board here with my offset spatula, removing any of that excess buttercream. And then we're going to be ready to make our candied cranberries and sugared rosemary. Leave me a comment below and tell me if you prefer piping with royal icing or buttercream. This technique could totally be used with royal icing as well. It would look great. Time to make our candied cranberries. So I'm scaling 340 grams of granulated sugar in a clean stainless steel pot, which is pretty small. Now I will scale 340 grams right over top of that and we are going to make a simple syrup with it. And I have 340 grams of fresh cranberries. I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of orange blossom water, which just gives it a really nice orangey flavor but not overpowering, it's optional. Next, you will bring your simple syrup to a boil. So this is just to dissolve all the sugar and it'll make sure that it lasts longer in the fridge as well if it comes up to a boil. So I'm just stirring it as it boils to make sure it dissolves evenly. And as soon as it's boiling, you can turn off your heat. And grab a medium sized stainless steel bowl and pour the simple syrup while it's still really nice and hot into the bowl. Follow that with your fresh cranberries. 
and this is going to make the skins a little bit softer but it'll make sure that the sugar syrup can penetrate the cranberries and make them a little bit sweeter. So give them a really good stir to make sure they're all coated in that sugar syrup and then you can wrap it up in plastic wrap. And I'm just gonna make sure that the plastic wrap is touching the surface of the cranberries and syrup so that everything is really nice and submerged while it goes into the fridge to take a little nap overnight. This is all set to go. I will pop that in the fridge overnight. And these are the cranberries once they come out of the fridge. They look super nice and glossy and we are ready to drain them. So I just have a strainer over a glass bowl and I am straining all of these cranberries out at once. And make sure you get all the syrup in the bowl as well because you can save that to add to cocktails or mocktails. It's really delicious. Give the cranberries a really good shake to make sure you've got as much syrup as possible out of them. And then you can reserve your cranberry syrup. We'll use a little bit for our sugared rosemary, but the rest you can keep. Sprinkle about a handful of cranberries into a container filled with granulated sugar and give them a really good shake about. So you just want everything to be totally covered in that granulated sugar. You can also use your hands. I'm gonna show you in a second, um, just to help sprinkle some of the extra sugar on. And then once they are fully coated, we are just gonna put them on a drying rack in order to dry for about an hour until that shell is nice and crunchy. So sometimes you'll find your fingers smudging some of that sugar off when it's still uh, wet like this. So you can grab a bunch in your hand. You can just take them in your palm and gently roll them around to knock off the excess sugar. I find this to be a little bit quicker than removing them like one or two at a time, which could take forever. So I will just continue working through all of these cranberries. You definitely don't have to make such a large batch, but uh, I don't have anything else to do with cranberries right now. So I used all of mine up and they are such a tasty snack. I would just say eat them within about two days. Here are all of the beautiful and really tasty candied cranberries. And next we will be making our sugared rosemary. You'll want to start with a fresh sprig of rosemary and I like to bend them a little bit so that they're easier to kind of curve around the cake. Next, I have some of my cranberry simple syrup, which I'm just gently brushing over all of the rosemary leaves. I think that's what they're called, but you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Just make sure not to oversaturate them. You want a light layer of the sugar syrup on it so that it doesn't get too clumpy with the sugar afterwards. So now we're just dunking it into the granulated sugar and sprinkling some on top as well. Making sure the entire thing is fully coated and looks very nice and snowy. So that's perfect. I'm going to leave that aside to dry. And I'll show you one more of the larger sprigs. These longer ones you can absolutely use just like this, but sometimes if I need a slightly shorter piece, just cut it in half and then you can use it as two separate pieces. So just gently brushing it, making sure the entire thing has a really nice coating of that simple syrup, and then I can sprinkle it and toss it in with the granulated sugar. And be sure to flip it over too so you get both sides. I'm just shaking off the excess here, and then we are gonna be ready to set this aside. Let these sit for about an hour, just like the cranberries. That way the sugar is less prone to falling off. I have a few more sprigs to do, so I will get those finished and we'll be ready to assemble the cake. We will now arrange the cake, so I'm just gonna do a really simple circular wreath all the way around the cake. So here's one of my longer sprigs of rosemary and I'm just giving it an extra bend so that I can drape it around the back side of the cake. And feel free to cut off the stems or any pieces that just look unsightly on your rosemary sprigs. And just continuing around, so I put this piece on to drape a bit over the edge, and then I actually lifted the previous piece up so that I could cover the back end of that one. This is definitely a technique that you wanna do uh, when you don't have to transport the cake. You wanna add this at the venue or at someone's house because 
these pieces are just gently draped over top. Of course, you don't want to be eating rosemary sprigs, so this is how we want it to be. I'm just making my way around the cake, making sure that the entire thing looks really nice and full and fluffy, just like an evergreen wreath would. Now you'll add your candied cranberries. So just gently stick those right on top. They should be crunchy on the outside now, so you shouldn't have any problems with picking them up and smearing the sugar around. Just press them in wherever you see little gaps. These candy cranberries would also be great to serve alongside the cake once you slice it up. Um, so every guest would get a few of the cranberries. And they also look beautiful just around the cake board and on a charcuterie board, they'd be awesome. And there is the completed knitted cake. Don't be overwhelmed by the amount of piping. You absolutely do not have to do this much if you are just intimidated by it. Just have fun. It is the holidays after all, and I hope you give this technique a try. And if you do have any questions, you can always leave me a comment in the comment section below this video. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this seasonal festive tutorial. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments below and I will get right back to you. When you give this a go, don't forget to find the tool and ingredient list below, along with the recipes for candied cranberries and sugar rosemary. And before you leave, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more cake videos just like this one. And I will see you next time.